Hey there, NextJunTacos here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to use the get short log command to get all sorts of different stats around who contributed to a code base. For example, we'll be able to get how many people contributed to a code base total, how many commits they had. We'll be able to add some flags around even limiting it to specific dates. For example, you can see who are the active contributors to a code base by looking at, let's say, the last 30 or 90 days of commit and you know, just getting a list of who commit. Now, this could be really useful. For example, I was recently looking at a tool called Sneak and it's a security tool not related to this video, but the way they do their billing is number of contributors over the last 90 days. So I was able to run this command to basically get a rough idea of how much that service would cost us if we decide to do it. But this command here is also quite useful because if you're very new at an organization or maybe you're doing some contract work for a bigger company, you'll be able to run these commands against a Git repo to understand like, you know, who should you contact to ask some questions around a specific service. For example, you know, you can just run this command against a repo and just see that, oh, you know what? It looks like Joe Blow has made 85% of the commits over the last two months. So that's the person you should probably contact. This is pretty nice. You know, basically, you know, you can figure out answers to these problems without talking to a manager or another teammate or something like that. It's also pretty interesting because you can do some risk assessment against uh, pull requests. For example, you know, you can look at the committer there, the author of the commit, and if they've never made a commit before to that project, then you can say maybe it's a little bit risky versus someone who made, you know, 35 commits to that project in the past. Uh, really, the possibilities are endless. It's going kind to of come down to whatever you want to use this command for. Now, I'm right now in an example Dockerized Rails application. And this project is up on GitHub, so if you want to clone it down just to run these commands, feel free to do that. Uh, but you can run this on any Git repo. It's not specific to here at all. I only picked this one here because it has a, a decent example of multiple branches, and we'll get to that in a bit here. But uh, the command that we're talking about here is git short log. And if you run it with no flags at all, it is going to give you a list of committers. And you can see here that I have 152 commits, and here they are in order from the oldest commit up top to the newest commit here on bottom. And this project right now only has one committer, which is me. But uh, this command that we just ran, get short log with no flags, it is only going to operate on whatever branch that you have checked out. In this case, the main branch. But you can add a flag here called dash dash all, and that is going to do this against all branches here. And you can see I have 153 commits now. There's one extra commit there. And if I go down here, there is a sneak bot who has had six commits here. And what's interesting about this one is, yeah, sneak bot is a tool that I had temporarily hooked up to the repo but it automatically opened some pull requests that I ended up actually closing. I didn't merge them in. Uh, that's why they're not uh, attributed to commits on the main branch, but these branches still do exist up here on GitHub. You can see under the main branch that there's uh, six of them there. And actually I should probably delete them. What I ended up doing there was I just closed the pull request and uh, yeah, the branch didn't get deleted with that. It's a little bit unfortunate, but whatever. But that's almost, you know, that's why I chose this repo specifically because of that example. But uh, yeah, typically, you know, you might be only interested in understanding what's happening here for uh, just the main branch. So maybe you won't run this with the all flag. That is really up to you. And you can also filter this out even more. For example, you can do no merges and you can see before it had 153, now there's 152 or sorry, 151. So that means here with no merges is it is only going to show commits that weren't uh, merged into the main branch. These were actual commits that I made to the master branch. And that makes sense. Typically, you know, that's the way I operate on this repo here. I just have a whole, whole bunch of different commits here. Uh, yeah, just posting to the main branch there. And uh, Going back here, uh, if you didn't want to see that, and let's just say that you wanted to see, you know, just the merge request, you can do that as well. You can do just merges with the no in front of that one. And here we can see the missing two, where I actually did open a pull request on the branch here to one, remove CI cache. And another one was a, a really big one where I updated from Rails 6 using Webpacker to Rails 7 with ES build. And, you know, something like this, I wasn't confident doing that in the main branch. So I actually made a pull request. And yeah, this is a very quick and easy way just to, you know, identify these two specific um, pull requests here just by using merges. And if you don't use the flag like that, then it just combines them both and you end up getting both. Now, you know, this output here is a little bit noisy, right? We can see all the names and, you know, each, every specific commit here. But, you know, maybe you just want to do the summary instead here, where that is just going to give you a unique count of all the committers. So we can see in this case, there's only two of them. But here, you know, we don't get all the details about the commit messages. We just get uh, the numbers, which is kind of nice here. You know, you can imagine on a more popular project or whatever, you know, there might be like 15 contributors there and you can just get a complete list of all of them here. And then right there, you can tell like who are the most active contributors there. But you got to be careful too, because, you know, active is a little bit different than like overall contributors, right? You know, somebody can make a uh, 
5,000 commits to the project like five years ago, but then they haven't made a commit in four years or something like that because someone else is doing it there. Um, but you can see here too, though, that I am getting output for both users here. If you just wanted to get a very specific author, you can just put in their author name here. So for me, example, you know, just my name there, it's going to get that one. You know, if I wanted to do for the other one, I think it was a uh, sneak bot with like that. Yep, there we go. So you can just filter it down if you'd like here. It's kind of useful to have. Um, you can also filter it by date with the since flag. So if we do since and then we do something like, I don't know, July 1st, 2022, uh, you can just see the commits there. Uh, there was nine of them there. I'll get rid of summary just, just so we can see a little bit easier what was happening there. Yeah, these are, you know, nine specific commits that I've made since July 1st, 2022. Now, I think there's all sorts of other different ways to format that date. I think it might work if you do it like this. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so, we, you know, whatever your preference is for dates, it's, it's pretty good. I think it even works with like the short form of the date as well. Yeah, you don't even need to type in the, the full month. So, you know, chances are if it's a reasonable date format, you could do that. And uh, what's also kind of nice too is you can do relative dates. So if you wanted to do 30 days, then you can do since 30 days. And, you know, there's five commits there from 30 days. You can do like 90 days, if, for example, if you want roughly three months there. Yeah, that works as well. And speaking of like three months, well, if you wanted to do three months as well, that is going to work too. And uh, yeah, so I, I don't know if, 30, if three months or oh, 90 months, that's so a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if 90 days, that shows 12, but then three months, I think it showed like 16, right? That's kind of interesting. In a little bit, we're going to go over ways of how to customize this output to show things like the date. But uh, before we go there, which is coming up soon, I suppose, I just wanted to mention that you can also do since and before. So you can do, you know, since three months. Well, that's going to be kind of weird before, like that wouldn't even make sense. But let's let's just say we were doing something like, I don't know, uh, April 1st, 2022. Um, that's before. And then since, I don't know, like maybe May 1st, 2022, I don't know why I wrote 2020 there at the end, but yeah, this will give us nothing. Why? Because I'm horrible with parsing dates here. I think I needed to swap them around to be, you know, before May 1st and then since April 1st. There we go. That's what I meant to get. And this will just give you uh, a range, right, between all the commits between April 1st and May 1st of 2022 or whatever date range that you'd like. You know, that's uh, not too bad. Another way of doing that, I guess you could do... Um, since May 1st, but then you would want the one that comes after that. Oh, I see what would happen. Okay. So you would actually do since April 1st and then you would do before May 1st. That, that actually makes more sense to my brain there. And that gives you the same answer. Like, I feel like this is way, way more straightforward than, uh, before and since, even though it's like the same thing, like, you know, before May, before May, since April, since April, like it just makes more sense to read it with since first, right? Because you have like since April, but before May, of course, that's like in between the two dates. And then, uh, yeah, going back to what I was saying before around, like, let's say you want to get uh, a different output here. Let's ignore these dates here. And we just go back to what we're seeing before. And then let's just say that we want to format this uh, a very specific way. Now I am reading this one off camera a little bit because yeah, these flags are a little bit hard to understand uh, and memorize. But if you do format like this, and then you do percent CS, which is going to be a short date, that's going to be the hash and that is going to be the commit subject, then uh, yeah, we get errors. Why do we get errors? Do we actually really need to put the equal sign there? That'd be interesting. Uh, I guess we do. Okay. So in this case though, we can see that we get year, 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 month, month, day, day, and then we get the short commit SHA there and then the commit itself, which is actually quite nice. So there's a whole bunch of like different formatting flags that you can use. Uh, if we just change this to be, for example, a capital H, then it's going to give you the full get SHA, like the full 40 characters, I think it is, or 32, 40, something like that, instead of, you know, whatever seven or something like that before. Likewise, with the date, if you wanted to get um, I'll put this back to the short one. If we wanted to get something like the complete timestamp instead of just like the year, year, month, month, day, day, we can see here too that we actually get the time as well. So yeah, there's a lot of different uh, formatting flags that you can do here. Get classifies them as pretty formats. And if you scroll down here, there's all sorts of different percent things that you can do here. You can see there's commit hash and yeah, feel free to go over this if you'd like. You can get authors emails and uh, all sorts of other things like that, which is uh, pretty nice. So that is going to do it for this video, I think. This is a you know, brief introduction to using short log. There are a number of other flags that you can do, but you can always run their help menu here if you just wanted to check it out and just see what's going on there. Now, I also know, you know if you are using something like uh, GitHub, this is the Flask project here. We can see basically a list of contributors and you know the way you would access that, this one is if you just go to the sidebar over here and you go to contributors, then you can just see who contributed. And it's kind of nice looking at this, you can see uh, good old Armin over here. 
Mitsuiko or whatever, however you want to pronounce that one, Armin Ranacher. Uh, I always forget how to pronounce his last name, but you know, he's the originator of Flask. And you can see, you know, he was doing tons and tons of commits and then, you know, sort of tapered off for a bit. And then uh, David over here kind of picked it up from 2017 and he's been contributing a lot. So, you know, it's a good way to visualize things. And, you know, GitLab has something very specific too. Like if you go to a repository and then contributors, you can kind of see uh, a list of some contributors here. Um, kind of nice just to visualize that. But, you know, I do find myself using the command line here because you can get a lot more precise information a lot faster, right? You can just do date ranges, you know, specific relative times, like different formatting, you know, there's nothing stopping you from taking this format here and just formatting it in a different way. Like, you know, maybe putting this into another program, like get very specific information out, do whatever you want, analyze uh, the outputs, however you need. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, get short log. It's a fun little command. Let me know how it goes in the comments below. If you decide to use it, like what type of problems are you going to be solving? And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.